Hey there, using crypto mats in your renders is very easy. So let's dive in to show you how to get them set up in Redshift and then use them to comp in After Effects. Let's dive in. So here's a simple scene I have set up uh, from my Patreon tutorial series. Um, and I just rendered this out using Redshift uh, and I have a crypto mat set up. Now you'll notice in my scene settings, or the object list, there's no like special tags and all the objects. I have it on one because I need a displacement um, for that particular one, but you don't need to add like redshift tags all over the place to get crypto mats to work. All you have to do is go into your uh, render settings. Um, make sure you don't need to have multi-pass image selected. If, if you have other AOVs, you might want that, but if all you need is the crypto mat, then that's fine. Um, you go into the redshift options, go to AOVs, make sure you have if you want to change the compression settings for your uh, EXR files, you can change this to multi-part EXR and then select DWAA um, from the options list. But let's lo open up my AOV manager and you'll notice I just have uh, the one crypto mat layer. Now, if we delete this and start over, um, you'll find this on the, the, right -hand, uh, the, the left hand side. You can just double click to add it. Um, since we don't need the multi-pass output, EXR or crypto mats don't output to um, a multi-pass EXR. So you just want to uncheck that from the list there. Um, and then if you look at the settings for this, um, you could keep, leave it at default as six, although the file size for your crypto mat might get pretty big. Um, it's sometimes recommended to go like three or four, but we can just leave it at, de at the default of six. Um, and... Uh, then you should be good to go. You'll notice that the file name can get kind of ridiculous. If you don't care about that, that's cool. Uh, don't worry about it. But if you wanted to change that, you can change like the way your file name is structured so that it doesn't add like super long file names. Um, but I like to have like the detailed, like what's going on? What what sequences are these and things like that? Because when you put them into a larger AE project, you might lose track of what files are what. Um, if it's just like CryptoMat, um, then you need to know which crypto mat and which frame it is, et cetera. So I leave that, that default personally. Um, so let's, uh, now move into, um, after effects with this project and see how crypto mats work. Um, and I'll have them imported already. Um, cause importing an, a crypto or a, an image sequence is, is the same. Um, but there's steps after that, that are unique to crypto mats. So here we are in After Effects. I have my file already here. This is kind of like the effect that I wanted to get with this particular render. And I didn't want to deal with puzzle mats or anything like that. So crypto mats are great for um, getting your transparency layer and it looks great. Like I, I rendered this at a pretty low resolution, but the masking is perfect with the crypto mat. You can see there's no real like halo going on um, and it looks really nice. So here are my, on the left-hand side, you can see my two render layers or two rendered sequences imported. This one is um, just the regular beauty pass, um, the full sequence, 60 frames, and then the, the XR sequence. And I just imported this as a regular image sequence in EXR. So we're gonna create a new uh, comp from selection with the render. And then I'm going to drag my EXR layer uh, or EXR source uh, into the timeline. Um, next, from the effects and presets, you're going to open up uh, and type in crypto mat, um, and then just drag it onto your EXR sequence. And you notice by default, it kind of like gives you all these funky looking colors. Don't worry, uh, we'll be disabling those because we're going to select what we want to mask. So to start, double click on the effects uh, panel on the left, and then just hit OK when this, this pop-up comes up. And then while right after you do that, hold down Shift, and then right-click on the things you want to be your track mat. So I just select the background. And you'll notice it's it turns that all white. Once you have your selection done, in the left-hand side in the effect, effects panel, um, select matte only. And then it will convert it to a black and white which you can then use as your mask. So let's say I wanted this uh, layer to have a background and a foreground element. I would duplicate this and then set a track mat for the top. 
So if we turn this off and then we invert the mat, you can kind of see what's happening here. Um, and I believe it should be working just like we want. Um, so if we were to put stuff underneath, let's say we have our text and we want to make uh, the text mask out. And I had this, I think is bold. Text selection and AE leaves something to be desired, I believe. All right, so there we are there. I'm gonna make this bigger because we want it to be kind of like, oop, we want it to be masked out a little bit behind our uh, render. So we're gonna put this behind our render um, and you'll notice it doesn't work right away. Um, sometimes you have to invert. Uh, what's going on here? Can I invert this Luma mat? Yeah, there we go. So now you the mask is inverted and I have it set to Luma mat. Um, so that's how it's working. It looks great. And now we have our text masked uh, behind our layer. And you can see that there's no kind of halo going on and it'll work perfectly. So that's kind of like the intro to these crypto mats. Um, you could do a lot of cool things with them. Obviously I did some more steps to get to something like this, where I have like the, the background inset so that I can have a cool design there going. But this is that's the basic workflow for getting crypto mats together in After Effects. Um, let me know what you think in the comments and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a good day. Thank <laughs> you.